In my M device, I played uh, a lieutenant, Lieutenant Martin Castillo, and um, it was probably one of the most interesting journeys that I took and or have taken uh, in television because it was um, such a well-received uh, commercial piece of work. Um, it uh, I joined in uh, opening season, episode four. By the pilot and three episodes into it, they uh, Gregory Sierra, which was playing the original lieutenant, um, stopped. Uh, they shot him and killed him. They killed him off. And uh, I don't know exactly why. I just do know that he wanted, didn't want to do the show anymore. And they, they, he asked, you know, can we, can I, can you get somebody else? And um, and so he he was replaced by me. It was really interesting because I was a new artist. They didn't, it didn't take much to have me working with them, and I, my agency was very modest and humble, and and so we were able to uh, work, but we weren't thriving and thrusting with money. And so we were staying alive, and I'm walking around with, in, in my Volkswagen, and uh, 67 Volkswagen, the year was 1983, 84 now, with uh, Michael calling me up, asking me if I wanted to work on Miami Vice, and I said, thank you, but man, I, I can't do this right now. You know, if you want me to come in and do a part, I can, but I can't sign an exclusive contract with NBC. I can't really, you know, I have really had a strong sense of my characters and I, I've had artistic control of my characters, including on Blade Runner and on, on Wolfen and, and Zoot Suit and, you know, they, they, the artistry had given me the responsibility and given me the right to have my creative control of the character. And that was something that I really appreciated because, you know, it's just, it's a wonderful feeling as an artist to have that responsibility. And so I said, I can't, you know, Michael, I appreciate, I had seen Thief, you know, a very strong movie. And uh, I said, Mike, I, I can't do that right now. Uh, but if you want to use me like for two or three episodes, I'm in. You know, if you want me to come out there and help you, I really could use the work. And he says, well, no, no, I'm looking for someone to take over the responsibility. It's got to be done quickly. I need you here tomorrow. Oh, I was like, well, I'm sorry, man. I hung up the phone and my wife comes up to me and says, uh, I think you should go talk to your son. Miko was uh, 10 years old at that time. He was in his room and she says, I think he's very sad. He's actually crying. He doesn't understand why his father doesn't want to work. Oh, it hit me like a knife to the heart. I said, oh my God. I said, oh. It's because I hadn't been thinking about my family. I'd been thinking about my artistic world, right? And we needed money. We needed to survive. We were, we were needed to go on with our lives. And it was very dangerous. But I had the feeling that the ballad was going to be successful. If I could go around the country showing it for free to build a word of mouth so that when it came out as a major motion picture, it would explode and it would be successful and I could go on making those kind of movies. So I walk in, I talk to my son and I told him, listen, this is, it, it, you know, I can't sign an exclusive contract. And I tried to explain to him, but he's 10 years old. I mean, you know, but don't worry, man, we're, we're doing fine. We're doing good. And I was delivering furniture at that time. And uh, to s support my family, I had started a delivery service. And uh, so I could make money at, late at night delivering furniture from auctions to people once a week that would give me enough money to be able to survive that week and do what I needed to be doing. And it was late at night. And so from like uh, 10 o'clock at night till about 6 o'clock in the morning, I would everything that they bought at these auctions, I could deliver to their home and I'd walk in their homes 10, I mean, four or five o'clock in the morning. And we're here. <laughs> okay, bring the piano in. You know, okay. And so we, we were doing that to survive. And I said, don't you worry about anything. And so the phone rings again. It's Michael Mann. And he raises the price. I said, wow. I said, Michael, what are you going to be doing? Next, uh, next during this period, he goes. Well, no, I'm going to be working on the show. I said, Yeah, but next year, what are you going to be? Well, I have uh, a movie that I'm working on. I said, What's the movie? I said, uh, He says, Manhunter. I said, mm. It's a, a take off on Hannibal Lecter, and uh, uh, I said, Wow, that's fantastic. And so you're going to be going off to do that? Yeah. He goes, 
And I said, that's what's going to happen, man. I, I mean, I'm going to be able to do things that I haven't been able to do. And they're going to come right at the time period when I'm in the show. And this show's going to be, I had the feeling the show's going to be successful. And, uh, and I know that if I get caught up here and it's 14, uh, no, 24 hours of television, it takes about 10 months to make. So I'd have two months of being able to, to do anything outside of this television program. And I'm sorry, but I wasn't a major artist that would, could regulate, okay, we'll do the movie in <laughs> through, through my hiatus. Yeah, right. Anyway, yeah, so I said, I, I, I wish I could, but I can't. So Michael, the phone rang again, and Michael wanted, was on the phone again, and I asked him, you know, what did he, um, you know, what was he going to be doing? And he told me that. Um, he'd be working on Manhunter. And I said, that's, you know, really, that's, I really feel that I'm going to be working on some of the things that I've wanted to do for a long time because I was developing at that time uh, Stand and Deliver, which happened in 1983. This was 1984. I had been developing the piece. And uh, so we ended up uh, saying no again. By this time, my family was away from me. They didn't hear me say no. They didn't know who was on the phone. Hung up the phone and... About 10 minutes later, it rang again. It was Michael, and he raised the price again. I said, holy macro. I took the phone away from my hand. I said, if I only would have known, all I had to do was say no, and they'd keep on raising the price. That's incredible. I said, thank you, Mikey, but I can't. I really appreciate this, and I, I, I don't want to hurt a relationship that hasn't even started. I, I've never worked with you. I want to work with you. I, you know, if you can use me on the show, please do. I would love to be a part of this, you know, to help you. But I cannot sign an exclusive contract, and I need creative control of my character. And those are two things that I really, they're not going to happen. I mean, Steve Bochco had asked me to be part of Hill Street Blues. And uh, I, I said I, the same thing. You know, I, I really wish I could, but I can't sign an exclusive contract. And then, uh, you know, there's NYPD Blue and... And so there was opportunities for me to work on television in exclusivity, but I, I didn't want to really commit to that when I had this other work that I was trying to do that could not be done. I mean, it's, it was really hard to do the ballad. It was really hard to do Zoot Suit. It was really hard to do these pieces of work that really Nobody knew anything about them. Nobody knew whether they were going to be successful. Who wanted to invest in, in Latin-themed projects? But I said, you know, that's the only way. And so and people say, well, but if you become successful, then it'll help you over here to do this. I said, yeah, but if I become successful for something that looks like this, they're not going to want to do stuff that looks like this. You know, I've seen it done, and it's, I've seen it happen many times with great artists. They commit themselves, and boy, they get rich and famous, and they're really moving well, and they try to go off and do something else, and they can't because now their audiences were built around this world that they had created, and they couldn't really go over here where they really wanted to be. So I said, I, I'm not going to take that journey. I, I, there's not enough time, and I'm not strong enough of, of an artist to really make people, you know, I'll be used up in this other world. And, and so I was afraid of a Miami Vice or a Hill Street or anything getting me to that point of, of making me known, but not allowing me to do Latino themed projects. Unheard of at that time. I mean, there wasn't even a, a whisper. And so, you know, and, and Zoot Suit was the first opening out party and I didn't want, I, I had a huge responsibility. And so I said, I'm going to take it. This, I'm going to take this. And I remember falling to the ground as when I got the phone call from the Mark Taper asking me to play that role. I fell down crying because I knew what this meant. And so um, I hung up the phone with Michael. And uh, the phone rings about 10 minutes later. It's the fourth time. And he says, uh, he raised the price. He says, uh, oh, by the way, uh, you know, we're trying to work this out. And I said, you know, Mikey, I wish you could. I'd love nothing more. I mean, the, the money he was offering me was more money than my father had made in his entire lifetime. Working 45 years of his life, he had never acquired what I was going to make in one season on this television show. 
And like I said, I wasn't really, I didn't need money in my house payment. It was $215 a month. I owned the house. Um, it was a modest little home, but it was perfect. Driving my Volkswagen, had no concerns. I had an, uh, a van, three quarter ton van that I used to use to move furniture. So I was set. You know, I wasn't living outside of my means. So, you know, come or not, I'm, I'm set, guys. So I hung up the phone, get the phone call. Fifth phone call says, he calls up and goes, Eddie, you got it. I said, what? He goes, you got a non-exclusive contract? I just need, a, you know, a 60 day out. Just give me 60 days prior to when you have to leave and I'll work around you. And you have, you know, a non-exclusive contract and you have creative control of your character. I said, oh man. And I said, uh, right at that moment, I just said, and I'll take the last offer. 